Hello everyone and welcome back into our Kerbal Space Program YouTube career. This is where we've been going step by step, mission by mission, making sure that you guys know what every what all goes into a mission and my mindset as we approach each one. Now the last time we did this, we landed on the MUD. We don't have any new missions that we've taken. There's nothing active. We have a maximum of seven, but it seems here they want us to rescue a lot of Kerbals around Kerbin. They also want us to go to Minmus. So what we're gonna do is, I notice over here in our R&D department that we are missing the hitchhiker storage container if we have that that makes rescuing these kerbals very easy because we can do them all at once what we're going to do is we're going to take these missions to rescue these guys but we're going to wait so one two three and then frodon is four so there's four kerbals that we're going to rescue later we have three more missions that we can take let's see what we have going on here Science data from space around the Mun. Now, in our Mun mission, if you noticed, we failed to collect some of the science that we went and got. So we're gonna have to recoup that in a return mission. Let's go to the Mun and let's see if we can't get some payback from the mission before. If you saw the uncut version, we had a hard time. So let's see if we can redeem ourselves and move on from there. Go to the Mun. We'll bring a lot of science back with us. So as always, let's load up what we had before because it seemed to be a mess. Well, we've unlocked more since then. But this was the ship that we made. I feel like we can do better now that we have better technology. So I am gonna start a new build. This is gonna be YTC007. And let's see what we can do from there. For starters, we have one return. We have the better pod, which is the MK2 command pod. This holds two people. So we can put a pilot and a scientist in here. And this is aerodynamic and does not create drag like the pods did. Hopefully we never have to use these pods again. We're gonna stick with these, with these very aerodynamic pods. All right. From here, we're gonna be building our last stage first. This is what's going to be landing on the MUN. So we're gonna go into our decouplers here. We're gonna find a Actually, let's go to heat shields first. We'll find the appropriate heat shield for this module. We now have strutting as we got last time. So we're gonna go ahead and auto strut all of these parts. I auto strut everything to heaviest. We're gonna load safety equipment on here. Drow shoots, put two of these radially. We're also gonna put two regular shoots on here radially. Nope, wrong ones. And then let's mess with the, the with the spread angle. That way we can see a nice little beautiful design as we come in. We're gonna put the regular chute on top. We're putting redundant parachutes on this only because we wanna make sure our kerbals come back alive. We're gonna put an antenna on this just in case to get into a habit for future use when we start using probes. Our antennas are here. Change this to single. You don't need antennas if you have a pilot because you still have full control over your vessel as long as you have a command module. But we're gonna we're gonna err on the side of caution and just get into the habit of doing that. And we're gonna pop a couple of batteries on. We have these rechargeable batteries here. We're gonna change our placement to side by side. That way we can have batteries lining the module here. And we'll throw four on board. That way we don't make the same mistake we had last time and lose our craft halfway to the MUN. So if you pick an item to change its offset with move, you can press the F key to either change it around the craft or around the item itself. We're gonna use the local offset to bring the batteries in just a hair. And that should work on the symmetry on both sides, which it did, it looks really nice. So we have antennas, we have parachutes, we have a heat shield. We need to now decouple this. So we're gonna go over here and put on our 1-8 decoupler. And we're gonna give it enough fuel to land on the MUN. Now this is 1-8 architecture. This isn't a DLC making history. If you can find a way to make it work with yours, go for it. I have a really difficult time discerning between what's DLC and what's not DLC. If you guys really want me to do a non-DLC version of this, let me know in the comments and we'll make a special video just for you guys. You can always come by the stream too and I, I would be more than happy to walk you through the process as well. But we're gonna stick with the 1.8 for now until um, 
until we actually get comfortable with, with the 2.5, which is going to be the larger things that we're putting onto Minmus and Duna and Eve, so on and so forth. You can do this with two and a half. It'll be a little heavier, a little bit, be a little bulkier. Um, as long as you have your your uh, runway, not your runway, your landing pad and your VAB upgraded, the sky's the limit just as long as you carry the rocketry to, to, propel, to propel it in the direction you want it to go. So we're gonna switch this to Kerbin Vacuum. We're gonna have a better TWR on the MUN, but Kerbin Vacuum is the gauge for all when I'm building my rockets to make sure that I at least have enough to go where I need to go. Let's try the Bobcat and see where we're at. We're at 1800 Delta V at 4.06, it's way too much. Let's try the Terrier and see what that looks like. 25, 27 to 0.72. Now, the MUN's gonna be about five times that. So if we change this to the MUN, that should be like three and a half. Let's see what it says. Four and a half. Okay, so it's about six times. I was off by just a hair. Using Vive is a good method for me because it helps me determine things. I could be a little short and we still be protected in the end. So this gives us 2,500 Delta V. This might be what we end up building. We have an adapter. I think I want to go... Having it as short as possible is the most ideal way to do it because your center of gravity fits between the legs and your vessel lands on the MUN easier. But let's see if I can fit some science on here because we need to take the Science Junior again. Do we have a service bay? We do. It's too small though. Hmm. We have a fuel adapter. So let's make use of the fuel adapter. I think, well, the fuel adapter is not gonna do any good because it's gonna be small. We can do this though. This is gonna look weird, but trust the process. <laughs> this is gonna look this is gonna look kind of awkward. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna fit this science on here as cleanly as possible. That way everything works out in the end. I kind of want to put this pod here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take this pod and we're going to clip it into the ship. Kind of pretend like they have a trunk in their vessel. We're going to have the top exposed. That way we can access it because we're going to try and store all the science on our way back home. That's, that should make it back with us in one piece. So we've got goo, we've got science, we're gonna put a barometer here and a thermometer. Since we can take a scientist with us, we can reset these two sciences and we can actually collect the data this time instead of forgetting about it like we did last time. Make sure everything is strut. We're gonna put another adapter back on here again. This is gonna create a little bit of drag, but this should be nice. It gives us more Delta V. Our center of mass is currently right there. Let's see what we can do with landing legs. We got better landing legs too. We're gonna go four on this. And we might pull the engine up just a little bit to make the legs a little more centered. Let's see if we can bring that engine up just a hair. I don't like clipping too much if you can help it, but I think that we can bring the leg down a little bit. We need to concede. I think that would be ideal for a MUN lander because as we drain the fuel, let's see what happens if we drain the fuel. So as we drain the fuel out of here, the center of mass is going to go way up. We're going to be very top heavy. Hmm. This is why these legs are, are tough sometimes because then you're stuck with this. Do we have RCS? We have RCS. We can choose to go the monoprop route. Now, I personally don't enjoy RCS, but the reason why I see a use for it in this application is because we're tall. And when you have a tall rocket, you wanna make sure that you keep your top steady. And RCS is arguably the best way to do that. So do we have room for RCS tanks on our ship? This is gonna cost us a little bit of Delta V, but we can take these monoprop tanks, they're very small, and we'll run four of them around the corner here. This will give us 80 mono propellant. How much Delta V do we lose from that? We lose about a hundred Delta V. But I think that's worth it for what we get out of it. So we're gonna bring these in, that way they look like this. And then over here in command and control, we can take these place anywheres 
and we're gonna put four of them right here along the decoupler. This takes away another 25 Delta V, but what this does is this will keep the craft from toppling over. As long as we turn on the RCS button in our nav ball as we're coming down. Now, is there anything else we can do with this in the meantime? We did get a better battery that we can go and try to use. Let's pop this off for just a second. Grab our new battery here that we haven't used yet. The smaller battery, but we're gonna put one in there just in case. And then we also need a control wheel. So we're gonna grab this better control wheel that we now have access to. We're gonna bring this up to encapsulate the battery. And we're gonna put our science bay on top of it. So now we're gonna be more top heavy, but I think we are solid with the RCS plan in order to keep our craft nice and level as we touch down. 2,573 Delta V. That should be enough. We're gonna, we're gonna put it on a, a ship that can get us there. That way we can just drop right on off. We do not have docking ports yet. So we can't do the, the really cool trick that I wanted to do. That gives us our, our new and improved Mun Lander. Let's put a crew on board. Jeb and Bill, no Bill. We're bringing, let's bring Bob. We haven't sent Bob out anywhere yet. And I think Bob needs a little bit of training as we're gonna be sending a lot of those people to Minmus later. Okay, so there's our Mun craft landing on the Mun, beautiful. Let's build this, the second, the next stage, which is gonna be the one that gets us probably 40 to 50,000 meters, hopefully to the Mun. This is gonna be an intermediate stage. So we're gonna start putting this together now. Uh, let me grab a decoupler and then hopefully, I, I don't, I haven't checked yet. Hopefully we have an adapter from 1.8 to 2.5. That's not it. This could be it. That's it right there. So we have a 1.8 to 2.5 adapter. I like changing the colors of these, which is also available in the making history. I like, I like orange. It's my favorite color. So we're going to try and make this like gray and orange. Unfortunately, you can't do it with the five meter parts. So that's gonna be sad once we get to that. But in the meantime, I can have fun. Now we're gonna build this a little short, but I also want it to do well, if that makes sense. Let's, let's cut the difference and let's use this piece. I do like the new ESA skins. It makes it look a little better because I think the orange one is a little too orange, but I want orange, so we're gonna run with orange. I'm gonna change the altitude to 40K because I believe we can get our first stage up to this point and this will accurately gauge the TWR of this system. We have 2257 at 0.88. Now that's not bad. 2200 will get us around and to the MUN. So that's gonna take care of a lot that we're worrying about this one. We can even use this to start our burn into the MUN if we have enough Delta V. That way this gets discarded from around the orbit of the Mun, and we don't have to worry about trash later. If you ever tune into my uh, Twitch live stream, we, we're, we're running a career currently where we're a big stickler on keeping orbital trash out. It's actually pretty interesting so far. So that's the different skin. We're not gonna run that one. And then we're gonna put a 2-5 decoupler here. And I wanna do a liquid, I wanna do a two stage a uh, lower stage. We're gonna go sea level on this one. And we're gonna use one of our new fancy engines. I think we got the mainsail. Then we got the skipper. We're gonna use this skipper and we're gonna try to use it to the best of its ability. So we're gonna grab these two and a half meter tanks here. Before we do that, I'm gonna put some control wheels in here. That way our ship can move around because as we get bulkier and heavier, we're gonna have a hard time moving. And I usually take these and hide them in a fuel tank. No one really complains about it because in, in the grand scheme of things, you would be hiding that in a fuel tank anyways or somewhere else on the ship to have control over it. So it just makes sense for me to do that. And, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Control Z undoes and control Y redoes if you're interested in that. I feel like one more of these and then we're not too tall. And let's see what the skipper does for us. Skipper says we have 2227 at 0.67. That's sea level. 
Now we can we can make this look better if we want to. Uh, if we pretend like it's gonna launch off the pad like that, I'm gonna put some side tanks on this. And we're gonna put some some auxiliary engines to help with the the oomph that it needs to get out. So where is our aerodynamics? We'll put some cones on here. We'll change these colors to orange, make this gray. It's all coming together, guys. Auto strut all of this is very important. And this gimbals, so we can go with the stronger reliance to help push us out. So this gives us 2249 at 1.02. Now that's perfect because we're not gonna launch these straight from the base. We're gonna put some SRBs on this as well. So right now our rocket's getting getting kind of pricey, but I'm okay with it in its current form. I think, I think this will do very well for itself. We're gonna put SRBs on the other side and attach them with some radial decouplers. We've got a couple of those recently. We've used them in the last uh, project that we put together. And I think we got some new fancy um, SRBs too. We got some knockbacks. We also got some Pollocks. They're a little bigger. That I think is too big for what we're trying to accomplish right now. So if I put these two on and I add these to the equation, this gives us 27, 2800 at 1.51, which is enough to get us in and out and on with our lives. Now we're gonna be adjusting where this decoupler sits because I want it as far up to the top of this as possible. That way the rockets come off and it makes a Y shape and they fall away from the rocket as it's propelling upward. So the rocket's gonna go from down here to up here. The, this one's gonna fall this way, that one's gonna fall that way and it should not collide anywhere with the rocket. Should not is the key phrase there. I'm making sure the SRBs are straight. They are not straight on the decoupler. You see how they're off? That's gonna cause your rocket to spin. So you wanna make sure that you take, grab an SRB, and then with your arrow flat over the decoupler, you wanna click. They're a little tricky sometimes, but if you, if you practice with it enough, you'll find out that you can get yourself right on and you're lined up. So, you can put your decoupler up here regularly or you can start it low and then use your move tool and hold the shift key. What the shift key allows you to do is it allows you to pull apart beyond the part that you attached it to. So if we don't hold shift, for example, and I slide up, it stops right here and starts to go into the ship. So I only have a limited movement here, but if I hold the shift key, I can go wherever I want to with it. So we're actually gonna put it right around here for starters, bring the SRBs down. And I want the SRBs to be in line here as accurately as possible, or as close as possible. That way they're all touching the launch pad. I can bring these up just another hair. And that seems to be okay. As long as we're in the last segment here. I might bring it up a little more. Let's run it like this and see what happens. We can always revert. We're in normal career. If we were in hard mode, I would take the precaution and go a little higher. But let's test this out and see how it works out. We'll auto strut there. We'll auto strut here. We'll put our aerodynamic cones on top. I can't change the color of the SRBs. So I'm gonna leave these nose cones white. They're gonna break off. We have our control wheels and it looks like we're good to go, 2,700. So our total rocket, there's 2,700 off the ground. Uh oh, we have a warning here. We're, we're slightly heavy. Oh, our mass is too high. Okay, uh, we have a million dollars. Let me save this and let me go upgrade our launch pad. We should be able to upgrade it. it Cost 282,000 to make it fully operational, done. Okay, so now the weight doesn't matter anymore. Weight doesn't matter. We still have plenty of money and we're good. So that was an easy, easy purchase on our end. So it was 2,700 for the first stage. Second stage is 2,200, it's 4,400. If you remember the Delta V map from before, we only need 34 to get into orbit of Kerbin. So that's enough to get into orbit and to make our way over to the Mun. And then we have 2,500 on the last stage here. It should be enough to get us down. 
get the science and get off. We're gonna try and collect it all this time. I'm I'm guessing we're gonna get 300 science. I'm also gonna look for a rock while we're there. I don't know if I wanna pick one up or not. Double check our crew. Double check our staging. Make sure that we have everything that we need. We don't wanna leave off the pad and forget a battery or a control wheel or landing legs. You wanna make sure you have everything. So if we launch from here, these break off, these still burn. We go through the system, this decouples, which is right there. This rocket fires, which is right there. Takes us to the MUN, this decouples, then this rocket fires, and then this comes home and the parachutes deploy. Sounds like a plan. Batteries, antenna, parachutes, heat shield, RCS, science, RCS tanks to make sure we have our RCS actually functional. And it looks like a pretty solid design. We're under 50,000. Let's take her out. Best of luck to us. Now, when you come out to this uh, pad, you want to double check your staging is still, still accurate. I've had a few times where Kerbal likes to scramble them up. Maybe it loads the ship incorrectly. Maybe something happens. Make sure you always have your maneuver node up. Turn on your SAS. That way your rocket stays true. And good luck. Godspeed. Five, four, three, two, one. Early career, your SRBs are gonna make it very hard for you to steer. Because they're on these two sides and we're gonna be turning that direction, we're gonna rotate our rocket 90 degrees because I want these SRBs to come off on the sides. That way, while we're doing our gravity turn, it doesn't affect anything. Now, because we've turned, 90 degrees is gonna be up. You're gonna still be able to uh, turn that way but you have to use a different key. Which key are we using? Uh, see, I'm not good when we turn the nav ball. I like having it in one, one direction. We gotta keep our TWR down. I'm over here fooling with the controls and not flying the rocket correctly. I don't, I'm, I'm scared of moving the rocket right now, so I'm just gonna let the SRBs burn out and then we'll adjust it here in a second. All right, SRB set. It did exactly what we wanted it to do by design. We should have started our gravity turn by now, but I don't know how to control my ship beyond the nav ball. That's something I have to work on. But we can start gravity turning now. So we're gonna punch ourselves over to 45. We're gonna pay attention to our max apoapsis and our TWR. I forgot to throttle up, that's important. We've already made a couple of mistakes. It's easy to recover from early mistakes as long as you have a ship powerful enough to do it. We're gonna really, we're gonna raise ourselves on this side of the 90 degree line just a little bit to get our cells straightened back up. Because right now we're gonna be had at a very awkward orbit. Once we do make it around, our apoapsis is at 45. We're gonna put ourselves at 20 degrees and just chill for a little bit. It should be enough. There's our orbit. That's where we should be at if we're trying to make orbit. Orbital velocity is 2,200 meters a second. We have 1,000 delta V left, which means we're gonna be at 1,900 when this first stage disconnects. As this gets closer to 70, we'll put ourselves more horizontal. I wouldn't go more than a minute and a half beyond your apoapsis. Be sure to use your throttle wisely. Use your map if you need to. Keep your apoapsis in front of you until you are completely around. Now that we're at 65, I'm gonna go ahead and go horizontal. Our TWR is a little high, but I think we're fine. We're gonna have first stage separation here in about 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and burn this completely out at full speed. We're hitting a minute and a half right now, but we're five seconds from emptying. Two, one, zero. All right. Second stage deploy. We're gonna kill the throttle stage. We're not gonna throttle up yet until we are closer to apoapsis. Our current TWR is 0.88, which means we, we can, we're fine because we're gonna be closer to out of the atmosphere, so we're not worried about all of the gravity pushing on us. So we're gonna wait until about 30 seconds from apoapsis. We're gonna warp just a hair to speed ourselves up. Because right now we're, we're moving incredibly slow towards this point because we're going up. 
So between 20 and 30 seconds you want to burn, you want to keep our apoapsis around under 30 seconds that we were burning optimally. Okay, so there's 25. I'm going to lock ourselves prograde and we're going to burn. So what this does is if you see it counting down, take control of your ship and go over this line. You want to make sure that number stays still or counts up because if it's counting down, that means we're catching up to the apoapsis and you want to leave it in front of us. It's still 10 seconds in front of us, but we want it to, to be well in front of us. So if you notice it's taking a lot longer to take down the nine, it's because we are currently trying to get it pushed out. So as long as that sec they're now starting to count up, which is a good sign. If you see it counting up quickly, you can turn yourself back horizontal. This will cause it to count back down again, probably. We're also almost at a positive periapsis. So if you if you can judge your rocket, if you can judge his thrust and how fast you're gonna get to a certain point. You may just go ahead and decide that pure horizontal is the way to go. We're gonna go ahead and go pure horizontal now. If this goes over 30 seconds, we're gonna kill the engine. We're gonna try and feather ourselves around. So right there is 31 seconds. We're not completely in orbit yet, but it's safe to say that we will be in orbit very soon. We're gonna open up our antenna. We're gonna breathe a sigh of relief. And once we get within 10 seconds of apoapsis, we're gonna finish this burn around. Get about 77 by 70. Crack our champagne open and drink it as we're floating in space. See how that timer keeps going up? Because as it moves around, it's going to push the apoapsis pretty hard. As we get closer to 77, once we hit 77, our where we sit at becomes the periapsis as we're extending the orbit on the other side. So these numbers flip wildly. And it's okay. We're just, we're, we're in orbit, so everything's good. I'm just trying to achieve, quote unquote, like the perfect orbit. 77 by 77 roughly is good to go. I'm gonna double check all of our science again, make sure that we got it all here. We can always EVA and change it out. So there's five science. Every little bit counts. We'll, we'll observe our mystery goo. There's two, so that's seven. Log temperature, nothing. Log pressure, nothing. And now we can right click on our science storage here, collect all. And then we got to get our scientist out of here to go reset those modules. So space to let go, turn on your RCS, that way you have a hold of your rockets. To steer a Kerbal in RCS, W goes forward, S goes backwards, D is right, S is left. Shift goes up, control goes down. Long as you keep your Kerbal facing in that direction, those controls are always constant. And if you learn to fine tune them, you can have your Kerbal just kind of hang out here in space next to your craft forever. But for now, we're gonna be using our scientists to reset our science and reset our goo. And we're gonna bring them back into the cabin. We can do it, we can do a, um, an EVA report out here, which hasn't been done yet. We can grab that. And then over here, F is to grab the door, B is to board. Sometimes you get the B first. Uh, let's see if we can actually get this to work. There we go. Grab and board. Let's do a crew report while we're here. Okay, we'll keep that experiment even though it's empty. Every little bit counts. So we're going to head to the MUN. MUN's right there. We're going to set it as a target. Left click, left click. Now, Usually, if it's at your, if you set your, if you pretend this is a clock and you put the MUN at your three, you want to burn here at the six and you'll meet it at noon. That's usually the, 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 the rule of thumb. We're all, we're on, we're at the noon right now. It's only going to take us about 15 minutes to get around, but the MUN's going to move a little bit. So let's pretend like three o'clock is right there. This is just us eyeballing the guests. We'll see. We'll fine tune it as we get to it. We can increase our prograde burn here and you can see we guessed it pretty well uh we, you can fine tune that to save a little bit of delta v if your craft maybe isn't going to make it uh we can probably come over here from this side and it's still the same delta v uh, however you see fit however close you want to get to it you can even click on the mun go to focus view and you can even tighten it even more go to this view pull up your pull up your um Maneuver, it'll let you. I guess you can hit it here in next maneuver. 
And then you can use these tools here under the graphical maneuver editor, turn down your scale, and then punch these numbers. Pull and pull and tug on these, and you can get yourself as fine tuned as you want. So we can get real close. Right click on this, that way it stays on the screen. We can get to 30, 12,000, let's back up. Let's go 15,000 around the month. And that's almost equatorial, it's a little off. We use normal anti-normal just a little bit. We can probably straighten it out. That's pretty straight. 884 Delta V. We're gonna point ourselves there since we have control over our craft. Tilde takes you back over to your ship. So we're gonna take care of that real quick. And then M goes back into your map mode. And that's how you, that's how you kind of fine tune some things if you really, really want to. Now we're probably not gonna get exactly there, but this gets us close. We're gonna aim ourselves at the reticle. It's probably gonna stay there for the most part as we warp to the burn. Because right now we have 11 minutes till we get there. So we're gonna warp to our next maneuver. It's gonna get us within a minute. That means we can make our last minute prep. Double check everybody's okay. Make sure they got their snacks. Make sure you've got your snacks. If you haven't hydrated yet, make sure you drink some water. Get up, stretch your leg, take your dog for a walk. You can pause the video, it's YouTube. And we're gonna start burning right here. We've got full control over the ship. We have signal, we don't need it. All of our science is good to go. We're gonna try and get deep space, deep or um, outer space. Like there, there's, there's science close to Kerbin and away from Kerbin. So we're gonna try and get further away science once we get this burn halfway through, or not get the burn finished, but start moving halfway through before we run into the mun. And we'll I'll go ahead and store that in here as well. We're gonna try and collect as much as we can and not forget any of this time around. We have 1,666 Delta V, way more than enough. We're gonna be discarding this as we're landing. It's gonna blow up on the mun as planned. Three, two, one. Let's go. Now you may have to keep yourself here and move yourself around just a hair. This engine gimbals, it's very powerful. Once you get close to the end, it's gonna shoot off across the nav ball. Don't worry about it. If you find yourself locking on the prograde, just go ahead and lock the prograde. Like I said, we're not gonna end up exactly where, we're, where we pinpointed ourselves, but we're gonna get pretty darn close. We still got 50 seconds of burn left. Crew's having fun during this burn. They're pulling about one G, which is normal. The, the, the ship is propelling itself in a direction, so it's gonna have some force on it. It's not too powerful. It's not gonna break anyone's neck. They're enjoying it. They're having fun. 22 seconds left. Now, the reason why we were off from prograde is because it was making up the anti-normal, normal, radial in, radial out parts of our burn. And now it's caught up to the actual prograde part to get us out. The nav ball is a very powerful tool. There's very fine movements you can make with it that can make or break uh, a burn. Now that we're within the last 20, it's gonna get a little squirrely, but we're gonna try to burn what we can. You see it starting to move pretty dramatically. We're, we're gonna try to keep it up till the very end. Okay, you see how I shot off the nine ball like that? We predicted that was gonna happen. Let's double check where it's putting us now. It's gonna put us at 33,000, which is 20,000 higher than where we were at, but it's okay, we'll take it. Now, let's take advantage of this. We're gonna hop out to two hours out. We're gonna be beyond uh, one of the Kerbals that we have to rescue here in just a minute. We got four or five Kerbals to rescue. And when this settles here, we're gonna pop back over and try to get some more science. I'm gonna bring Bob back out. Bob is gonna do an EVA report. This is high over Kerbin. That's what the word I was looking for. We're gonna let go. Um, we're gonna hop over to this pod because we can drop off our science in there. So we can say store experiments when it pops up. Store experiments. You can grab onto that for now. We'll check science. Uh, let me hit the bracket to change ships because Kerbals count as a ship. Conduct materials bay study. 
That's eight more science. We're going to do some more goo. That is 15 science. Temperature, 12. Barometric pressure, 18. And then we can right click, collect all. We now have 11 experiments stored. And now we need good old Bob here to go reset those pieces. That way we can get them fired back up. Close, so we're gonna have far mun science and close mun science, and then we're gonna have surface mun. Anything that we reset by accident in our last run, we're making sure that we get all of it this time. If you have the time to take to go through all of your experiments and make sure you get 100% of your science, make sure you do that. If you have a scientist on board, it makes life so much easier. So we'll jump in. And at this point, we're going to be entering high mun right there. So that's 56 minutes. That's, that's an hour and 55. So we have an hour out here to take our time to get the science done. So now we've entered high mun. So now that we're on high mun, we're going to do the same thing we did before. I forgot a crew report at high. We got to do that coming back. So crew report. So we've already gotten the high over mun crew report. We can EVA with the scientist again. EVA report, that's zero. Just going through the motions, making sure we're getting all of our science. Conduct material study. 50 science. There we go. I think we're over 100 science now. Mystery goo. We're at, that's 4.6. We brought the goo up over here before, so we're probably going to already have these done. But it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's go grab Bob. Let go. Let's. Oh man, it's very violent how he disconnects from that pod. I'm not expecting it every time he does it. We're gonna reset. Oh wait, collect data. Oh man, collect material study. Keep experiment. Yeah, we need to hop over here real quick though on the ship and collect all. That way we get those back. That's what we. That's what. That's a mistake we made last time. We didn't collect the data. We just reset. And then we almost made that mistake again. It's very easy to do if you're not careful. It's a habit you have to get yourself into. There's Kerbin. That's a beautiful view, actually. Okay. So we're going to hop back over into our pod. There's the sun. There's the mun. We'll grab this. And now we're going to get into orbit of the mun, because we haven't done that yet. So we're going to do... An atom, atom maneuver here. Burn retrograde. Get ourselves real tight and around. And I want to get a periapsis under 15. 12, 9 seems okay. Let's go, let's go 13, 5. I'm, I'm a little worried. I think there's some mountains on the moon. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to get the low orbit science. It's also going to get us in and ready to land. Now, this is going to take up a lot of our Delta V, but the good news is this is being discarded. So we'll be able to drop off that second stage and still have the lander with full fuel coming in for the landing, which is which is going to be amazing. Now, we're locking retrograde because this is going to be a retrograde burn. It's just showing over there now because we're not there yet. We're going to go ahead and warp to next maneuver. You notice the reticle moves over to retrograde. We're not going to worry about trying to fine tune that this close to the surface. We're just going to make sure we do our burn and do our best. We're warping until the point of burn. See how the reticule's right over retrograde? We're going to start burning now. So if you notice, that's negative because right now we're escaping the mun. It says infinity, time to reach. We're just going to go out forever. Now we've caught back up. That little camera movement means that we're now in an orbit around the Mun, which is perfect. And then we're going to burn the rest of this Delta V out and be right around 13.5. We can feather it. This isn't a precision burn. 13.9, 13.5. Perfect. We have a Delta V left over. Now, once we get close, we can do low science. Let me double check we're not going to hit any mountains. Oh, we should be good. 
that's Jeff Bro. That's who we saved last time. We did a Jeff Bro and a landing last time. It was actually a fun mission, given all the retries that we had to do. So this is Low Mun. So we're gonna hop out and do the same thing. Crew report. 15 science. Bob's gonna EVA. We're gonna get EVA report. 24 science. We're gonna let go. We're going to conduct a materials bay study for 75 science, collect data, restore. Now scientists can collect data. I think anyone can collect data. We've already done temperature. Probably I've already done goo. We got 6.9 science from there. Nice. We're gonna restore the canister. Take the barometric pressure is fine bring him back collect all on the top can and then we're landing this is also a good way to practice your eva the rcs on your on your kerbals as you go in and out and you have a fuel but as you hop into the pod you always re your, your fuel always recharges so collect all we now have 23 science experiments we've never been in the, i've never been in that crater before i don't think we want to land in, in it right now they're going to be safe probably aim for a place like this as we come on back around but the goal is to land in the sunny side of the mud so we're gonna we're gonna move back around actually we can start landing now couldn't we let's start landing now why not let's go it's ideal to start at the apoapsis and work your way down because that's the most e efficient burn. But we have this whole stage here. We can just use it and discard it. <laughs> Which is what we're doing right now. We're gonna aim to surface. This is gonna be empty here in just a second. We're gonna discard it and say goodbye to it. We're gonna discard of it properly. What we're gonna do is once this runs out, we're gonna kill the engine, turn the ship to the side and get rid of it that way because if we don't, we might run into it on the way down. So we're gonna do this and detach it. And that's gonna make it go that way and away from us. So get our legs down, get the throttle down, stage the engine. We have 3.22 TWR. And it looks like we're headed right there next to a crater, which is that crater right there. So I'll give that some more distance. We've got plenty of time to slow down. We've got lots of smooth real estate ahead of us. We're going to start burning. If you if you get up and mouse completely over your ship, you can see where the center of mass is. We're going to start burning right at the lip of that meteor or that crater, maybe just before it. That should help us get here. And that's me eyeballing it. You can go into your map if you want to. This is the crater where, or this is the crater we're going to start burning at. You can add a maneuver and burn yourself down and try to figure out how much delta V you need, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're just going to we're just going to go. Not even worry about it. Not even that worried about it. So that's well on its way away from us, which is a good thing. And let's go on ahead and start slowing down. As soon as, we, as, soon as we hit that lip, we're gonna change this to elevation. We should actually start slowing down now. And if you notice as we're slowing down, that's gonna accelerate past us because it's going the same speed. It cannot accelerate or decelerate by itself. If we hit in the canyon, it's okay. I don't, I just don't want to hit on the edge. I don't want to hit on the lip of it. That's, that's one thing I don't want to do. Because landing on the lip is awkward. As you can see, it's starting to render the, the textures of it. Not fun. There's the shadow of the piece crashing in. You can see it as it goes down. Boom. Nice. So we have bypassed the lip. If we were a little more powerful, we can land right on it. We're gonna land just past it, which is what I wanted to have happen. I wanna land out here in this flat area. It's beautiful. Now I'm slowing myself. We're being pretty liberal with our Delta V because we've got plenty, but uh, you do wanna keep that in mind if you're trying to be a little stringent with it. But getting used to getting yourself slowed down way before the surface is ideal because sometimes you might not 
calculate your landing very accurately and you're going to hit the ground very, very hard. And you'll lose some kerbals. It's not ideal. You don't want to do that. We're going to do an F5 here just in case things go haywire. I think for the most part, we're golden. Now, you want to turn off your radial burn as you get close when you have a more powerful engine. But we're going to do that. Just keep ourselves stable. Because right now we're right over the ground. It starts to get squirrely as you come down. Kind of like how the target ridicule does when you're doing your normal burns for your maneuvers. And then we're just going to touch down here with no problem. Oop. Nice soft touch. Okay, so now that we're here, uh, our, our mission was to transfer and recover data from around the moon. We've already got that done. We just needed to come and get redemption for taking an hour and a half earlier to get to the moon before. Since we've got the upgraded equipment, it becomes much easier, as you can see here. And now we're going to actually get the science like we're supposed to. We're going to conduct a material study. It's 100 science. We're going to get the mystery goo which is 40 science. Grab our pressure, 48. Grab our barometer or our temperature, which is 32 science. Then we're gonna collect all. We're to 27 experiments. We're gonna hop Bob out of here. Bob's gonna touch down on the mud, be the first, second Kerbal to do that. So we're gonna EVA report. There's already one been done. Let go. Now, if you notice, we didn't have to use our, RC, our, our, our our RCS because we came down pretty straight. If you landed on a hill or anything, you would need the RCS, which is why I don't typically use it because if I land crooked, it's my fault, if that makes sense. But I also like to play a, a little careless at times. Surface sample, 30 science. EVA report, we've gotten that one. Uh, plant flag, I don't want a plant flag. We can take a surface sample though. We did, we did that already. What was it I was gonna do then? I don't know. I'm confused. Do I wanna grab a rock while I'm here? Probably not. Let's just, let's go reset these and get out. For some reason I thought there was like another thing that we could do. Whoa! EVA is a little dangerous when you're trying to hover around a ship on the ground. In space you have a little more leeway. But on the ground is a stationary for some reason I have a harder time with it <laughs> I've knocked over pods before trying to get back in <laughs> board so if we had RCS on if you notice it'll puff around and keep ourselves straight since we're leaning to one side since we're on a hill we are we are on a grade so if you notice it's doing a good job keeping us straight mono prop we've used about one it's burning you can see it red we don't need it. We'll just turn it off. Okay, we got everything. Collect this again. Up to 29. We got to get the high science around Kerbin, the crew report. Did we get a crew report here? We did not. Ha ha! Almost forgot that free 20 science. Now, we do have enough Delta V. We can hop into another biome. You can Google the Kerbal biomes and look at all of them. We can discuss that in another video. But for now, we're just going to go home. We're just going to go home. So we're gonna point ourselves towards the 90 as we launch because that gets us as equatorial as possible. And here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Change this over to sea level, point us at the 45 degree, get our legs up. Make sure we are turned appropriately for my liking on the nav ball. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna climb to an apple acid of about 15,000 circularize and then go home. And that about, that about wraps it up there. So as we're getting up and around the month, I want to take this time to thank you guys for watching the content that I put out here. If you don't know who I am, my name is Taradra. I'm a Twitch streamer. I stream on Twitch five days a week, Friday to Tuesday. We play Kerbal Space Program usually on Sunday, Mondays, and Tuesdays, but I do 24-hour streams every two weeks. We're actually doing one this weekend, and it looks like we're playing Minecraft for the majority of it. We're going to have a server up if you guys are interested in that. It's going to be open to pretty much everyone. But we're going to have some stringent rules on it. But I do 24-hour streams to grow the community. We have a sub goal. We have a bunch of awesome people in our community that you can come in and hang out with. So if you're watching this video, hop by the stream. There'll be a link below. Drop a follow. 
tune in when we're live. You can come by and say hi. You can ask questions about Kerbal, even if we're not playing Kerbal. But I also play a lot of City Skylines. Uh, we've played some Skyrim. I've played some Stone Shard. We've done we've done a little bit of everything. You can look me up on some third-party sites and see. We've played about 100 games so far in the year 2020. So the list the list gets pretty pretty long. So any any feedback, any likes on this video, subscriptions here, uh, follows on Twitch are greatly appreciated. We're trying to grow, and everything's been working well so far. With that being said, let's warp over to Apoapsis. Let's get ourselves around and get these two Kerbals home. What we're doing here, what you're currently watching, this is a YouTube-only career run. We have a career that we play on Twitch. It's a hard mode career currently, uh, but this is just for kicks to kind of get back into the roots, show you guys what to do. You can follow along in your own career as well. Um, I use DLCs. Like I said, if you guys don't want to see DLC content, let me know. We can change this up and, and change these ships around completely. It's not that difficult to do. And I can walk you through the system the same way. And this is, a, this is a way for you guys to kind of come back here once a week. The Kerbal videos go every Thursday. And you can come by and, and see what the next step in the progress is. I try to do at least one mission per video. So that's, that's what mission we're doing right now is the... Uh, transmit or, or recover science from around the mun. Once we get that hitchhiker unlocked, which is 90 science, we're going to be rescuing these four Kerbals, and that's going to be a lesson in orbital rendezvous over and over and over again that we're going to be covering next week that you can tune in and watch for sure. So we got ourselves up. Uh, we're going to get closer to Apple Apps before we burn some more. So we count this down. Five, four, three, two, one. And we'll burn around. It doesn't matter what our numbers look like. We have plenty of fuel. But you want to make sure that you get into a habit of being as precise as possible. Just in case you're in a low fuel situation. If you watched the video from last week, we were in a very low fuel situation. And we actually worked it out pretty well. To return back to Kerbin from the Mun, you want to burn prograde on the face facing the home planet. You're going to see a purple line pop up here. Right click on that. Continue to burn. You'll see it count down. Get it below 60. Not that far below 60. I would say about 55 is a nice safe number. That's going to be 302 delta V. That's going to be prograde. So we're going to stick ourselves prograde, warp to the burn, get this warp done. And then the reason why I say dip below, the, the, the atmosphere of Kerbin starts at 70. If you're in a ship and you're going to be coming home anyways, it's good to kind of dip below. That way you can start arrow breaking. Arrow breaking is a term used for people um, when you're using the, the atmosphere of the planet and the gravity to slow yourself down naturally. Like I said before, in case you're in a low fuel situation, our apoapsis right now is 12.2 million. It would take us a very long time to get there. Days. If we're, if we're just if, if we're just using arrow break but it's an effective way to get back in and get captured. We can use this in combination though with our fuel to slow ourselves down even more. It, it's kind of a free gimme. Now around Kerbin, it's safe to do. There are other places where it's not safe to do. And we'll of course cover that as we get the missions to go there. This is a 38 second burn. We're currently outrunning the spin of the Mun. So say goodbye to the Mun for now. That's a very spiky mountain there. Goodbye Mun. Thank you for the science that you provided us. It was uh, worthwhile in our journey. And we might come back to you in the future for just some biome hopping. But for the most part, we're done with the MUN as far as collecting science for future endeavors. Our next target is going to be Minmus, which is arguably the easier of the two moons. But some people enjoy the MUN for some reason. It's challenging for sure. All the craters make it a, make it a very, very worthwhile challenge. And if you're always up for it, boy, does it have a lot to offer. Now, I think we burned ourselves into Kerbin, which is a mistake you can make sometimes. We can fix that. We're going to warp here. Two hours and 40 minutes. We're going to turn ourselves prograde like we already are locked. And we're going to pick up our periapsis because right now we're crashing into the surface of Kerbin. If you notice, it's minus 36,000. So we're going to get here, turn around. We're in high science. Let's get our crew report because we forgot to get it last time. Crew report. Well, it says overwrite. So hold on. Let me store these real quick. Collect all. 
a crew report, seven and a half science. Bam. So that works. Let's get our periapsis up to 55 again. Positive 55. Three, four, five. Awesome. And we're going in. So I like to warp right around here. This will get us about 150, 200,000 meters above Kerbin's surface. 570. Okay, I was way off. But still, either way, <laughs> just close. These are running about 80, which is just above atmosphere. They're challenging sometimes to save these little Kerbals. And we're going to start entering the atmosphere in any moment. As soon as we enter the atmosphere, we're going to start burning. We're going to turn ourselves retrograde. We're going to close up this antenna. We no longer need it. We don't want to lose it on the way back. We're going to try to recover it uh, because it's attached to our pod. We're tracking the antenna. Make sure the legs are up. Make sure everything's good to go. Once we break into 70,000, we're going to start burning our engines. I don't care where we land as long as we can get recovered. Then here we go. 70,000. So now you can see our apoapsis is starting to come down because we're starting to get into the atmosphere. Gravity is taking hold. We're starting to slow down. Orbital velocity is 2,200 meters a second. So this delta V is going to slow us down to just below orbital velocity. It should allow us to get captured wholly. But we're just using it to... We're, we're just expending the fuel in the vehicle because we no longer need it. We're going to be discarding this stage the same way we did the one around the MUN. We're going to turn our vessel sideways, break it off from the side. That way it doesn't collide with us on our way in. And it should give us the maximum chance of survival. You can see our periapsis is staying the same because we're very close to it. This is the op this is the exact same as when we were burning from apoapsis in the beginning. We try to keep the apoapsis as close as possible. That way we can make a maximum change on the other end. And right now we're making a maximum change. Our TWR is not very high, but it's high enough to make an effect. And as we come in, this looks like, is this KSC? Oh, it is. Oh, we're actually getting really close to KSC. We're not gonna land there. But we're actually really close to it. That's awesome. We can wave at our fellow Kerbals as we fly by at 5,000 miles an hour in freedom units. We got 240,000 apoapsis. We got 400 delta V left, which will put us at 2,000, which will get us captured. There's KSC in all of its glory. 100,000, 80, 70. Boom, captured. You can see the camera flip right there. That means that we're no longer in orbit. And as this thing drains itself out of fuel, we're going to turn sideways and break it off and get ready to splash down. We're splashing down in the ocean. Looks like 150 delta V. Oh, yeah, there's nothing but ocean in front of us. We're landing in the dark, too. Say goodbye to the sun. We're watching it set in the opposite direction. Yeah, we flew right over KSC. That's actually pretty nice. So we're going to turn ourselves, break that off. It's going to go the opposite direction. We're going to go ahead and stage our shoots. Even though, well, I'm, I'm going to wait to stage the shoots. We're going to wait. That should not interfere with us at all, though. That should go its own way. We're going to start slowing down ourselves as we start right around 45,000 is when this thing's gonna start feeling the big pressure. You're gonna see plasma start to build up around it. In our hard mode playthrough, you lose signal when you get plasma unless you have a pilot on board. You still have control over your vessel. Make sure you point yourself retrograde that way the butt's there. You can see the ablator already starting to burn. You don't see the effects yet. There's the plasma starting to pop up. And here we are coming in. You can see that's well away from us now. It's almost like circling, which is kind of weird. But you'll see that takeoff pass us here in a minute because this is going to slow us down a lot. We're creating drag on purpose. That's the, that's the reason why this is built the way it's built. You can see the distance starting to really climb now. That's starting to burn itself. You can see the plasma around it. That should be blowing up here soon because it can't take all that. If any pieces do become recoverable, it's going to be more money in our pocket. We could have probably tried to save that stage, 
but I didn't want to run the risk of, of killing Kerbals. I figured just, we got the mission complete. If we just touch down and recover, everything's great. It's a blader. We're not using a lot of it. Some people like to cut this in half to save on mass. It gives you a little bit of Delta V in the future if you wanted to. If that's something you want to dabble into, go nuts. I like to leave the whole thing on there because I have used a whole heat shield sometimes. Depends on how much fuel you have and how much you have to aero break re-entering from another place. And if you have to make five or six passes around to slow down, you're, you end up using this whole blader. So we're starting to lose plasma here, right, as we fall under 1,000 meters a second. These should start lighting up yellow that we can start keying them in. We'll stage them as soon as the first one is yellow, which will be the Droz right there. The Droz have been staged. We'll slow down from that because they're pulling drag. And then as we get under 500, the other ones should start deploying as well. There we go. So then the next one at 2,500, these are going to open up, the Droz. These open up at 1,000. The sounds for the parachutes are pretty loud. I'm not going to boost. There's a there's a warp bug that allows parachutes to break, and I really don't want to experience that bug right now since we're right next to coming home. I can I can F5. Let's F5. And let's try warping and see what happens. Okay, we're actually good right now. See how the pod's shaking so violently though? It's dangerous. So 2500 is going to be drow shoot deploy. We're going to slow down before then in case the Kraken tries to strike. So there's them. The rest of the chutes will deploy at 1,000. There goes our piece there, five kilometers away, crashing into the water. So here's the other three deploy. And we are almost at a standstill. You want to come in under seven meters a second. So five is great. We'll turn SAS off. We don't need it on anymore. And that is a job well done. We're at 4x warp. If we weren't at 4x warp right now, I could sit here and talk to you for half of an hour. No, it's actually like six or seven minutes to come down. But if you have any questions or suggestions about this current mission, let me know. We could have done it a lot faster and got a lot less science, but I try to, I try to maximize our science in this trip because I want the hitchhikers uh, can. Once we get that, we can rescue all the Kerbals that are currently stuck around Kerbin. What we'll do is we'll install this on top of a land, uh, on top of the hitchhikers, put the heat shield on the bottom of the hitchhiker, and bring all of that back at once, almost in the same fashion we're doing right now. If you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And let's see how much science we got. I, I, I guessed what two to three hundred before. Maybe I guessed a little lower. Let's see how much science we do end up getting, because I know we got fifty seventy five. We got 577. That's insane. An insane amount of science. We got the mission done right there. It paid out with 930,000. Let's go to R&D and see what we can spend it on. For, for sure, we're going to get this can. That's the Hitchhiker storage can that holds four Kerbals. So we're going to grab that. Uh, what can we do for right here? Mobile processing lab. I want that. We're grabbing that for sure. Propulsion systems. This is for teeny tiny rockets. I don't know if we're ready for that yet. Uh, advanced fuel systems, monoprop and longer tanks. That might be something of, of value to us. These are better engines here. What are these? These are robotics. This is another DLC. Uh, we do need the fairings though. So we're probably gonna buy that. This is aerodynamics. This is for airplanes. Uh, I'm not a big fan of airplanes. We're gonna uh, stay away from that for now and save our science for other important things. That gets us deployable science. This gets us solar panels. Do I have enough science for that? I do. We're gonna grab some solar panels and then I want this relay next. We don't have enough science currently. So that's what we've purchased. That's what we have. We're gonna be making use of this in the next mission. And that is it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. We're gonna, we're gonna get these other rescues. How much do we have right now? We got four, four, five, six. We're gonna rescue all of those guys. Science data from space around Kerbin. That's just a freebie while we're out there saving Kerbals. Yes. All right. Seven missions. We're doing that in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day wherever you are, and good luck in your Kerbal endeavors. Good night.